We want to learn about a device which uh, maintains uh, potential difference, a cell. Before going there, let's consider uh, an example like this. A charged conductor and another charged conductor. Some distance, I will say. There are different potentials. Now, if they are left to themselves, nothing happens. This will maintain its potential. This will have a constant potential. This will have a constant potential. And that potential difference will be a constant. Nothing, there is nothing to change that potential difference. But suppose you connect them by a wire, conducting wire. The charge flows from higher potential to lower potential and potentials will eventually become equal. Flow stops. Potential difference is not maintained. There is nothing, uh, say, that works to maintain that potential. The charge electrostatic forces will cause the potentials to become equal. Suppose you had a mechanism of transferring charge from low potential to higher potential through some non-electrostatic force, then the potential difference will get maintained. So whatever charge that flows this way must bring it back by using some non-electrostatic force by some mechanism. Comes to this analogy. So we have a, a vessel and uh, we have another vessel with uh, say some liquid. There is a level difference. So what happens if there is an opening like this, there is a pipe connecting the two. The flow will be from higher height to lower height till the levels become equal. Higher level to lower level till the levels become equal. Flow stops. If you want to maintain that level difference, well you need a, maybe a device here which maybe a pump, let's say a pump. Well, a pump which uh, uh, say like this, a uh, device like this, which works to can't transfer charge of water from lower level to higher level. Even as this water flows this way, it's transferred this way. This is gravitational force doing the job. So there is something which overcomes the gravitational force to transfer liquid from lower level to higher level. So level difference is maintained. We need uh, something similar for charge. Now let's consider the working of a cell. We have uh, this simple old trike cell we are talking about. There are two conductors, two electrodes and an electrolyte. The electrolyte will have positive and negative ions. And these two conductors, uh, if depending upon the difference uh, of affinity for charges, for example, uh, this could have a greater affinity for electrons. So electrons uh, will be pulled from uh, the, the negative ions, will come towards the, this electrode, give away these uh, electrons and under, undergo some uh, chemical reaction there. It's not a simple transfer like in electrostatics. There is some chemical reaction happening. It is the chemistry that makes this uh, acquire uh, uh, a negative charge. So uh, negative ions go this because uh, they, this has got greater electron affinity. So this becomes negative. As the electrons become, uh, electrons accumulate in this conductor, the further flow of electrons is opposed by now the electrostatic forces. So flow is stopped after a while and this acquires a negative potential. This one let's say, well, takes the positive ions and uh, the well, positive charge gets deposited again through some chemical reactions. So there will be a positive charge for this because this loses electrons to the electrolyte. Some chemical reactions happen here again. So and even as the electrons leave, leave and this becomes positive, eventually the flow has to stop because this acquires sufficiently high positive potential to prevent the electrons from leaving. So there will be an equilibrium here, there is an equilibrium here, but with a potential difference. So initially they all had the same potential, the electrolyte, the conductors, but a potential difference developed because of the difference in the affinities for electrons. So well, uh, one gets negative, the other gets positive. You can disturb that uh, equilibrium by connecting them by a wire. If you connect them by a wire, this flow is through from higher to lower potential. So if the flow from higher to low potential happens, that is the electrons flow the other way. From higher to lower potentials, 
and as the flow happens here, say the pass to charge flows here, well because the equilibrium is disturbed, well further pass to charge is pushed in here, that means electrons leave here. This can get a bit of a nuisance, this actually electrons do all the job and then we want to define current as a direction of flow of positive charge, so that's a bit unfortunate. But anyway, the point is that uh, the charge flows here disturbing the equilibrium and the flow here happens inside to maintain the equilibrium. So this, is, this flow keeps happening, the potential difference gets maintained. You are familiar with a dry cell at home which maintains a potential difference between the zinc of outer cover and the carbon rod with that brass cap in the middle. Uh, potential difference is maintained because of something happening inside. Whatever happens inside is not due to electrostatic forces. That's the point that you should pick up. To maintain a potential difference, you need a non-electrostatic force to transfer charge from um, low potential to higher potential. There is a physics principle which could be used to maintain potential difference. This involves force and a charge moving in a magnetic field. So imagine a conductor moving in a magnetic field, say towards east, and there is a magnetic field directed vertically upwards. This is a horizontal plane and the magnetic field is vertically upward. That's magnetic field. You learned that charges experience uh, forces in a magnetic field when they are moving. And the force direction on a positive charge is given by the direction of V bar cross V bar. So that direction of V bar cross V bar comes to be downward, that is the positive charge experience of force, this way not downward, south end of this conductor. That is north, that is north, up is towards you. So this V bar cross V bar, let us say uh, V bar is like the direction of X axis, that is I bar, east is uh, X axis, north is Y axis and uh, magnetic field is vertically upward, that is K bar direction. Now if you have this uh, V bar cross P, B bar, that is like uh, I bar cross K bar, that is minus J bar, right? That is negative Y axis, negative Y direction, minus J bar. So this end will get uh, positive, this end gets negative. Actually, the positive charges are held in the conductor, they do not move. It is the electrons that move this way. And as the electrons accumulate this way, there will be enough electrostatic force to overcome the force due to magnetic field on them and the flow stops. An equilibrium is established here with a potential difference between the ends. That is interesting. You have a potential difference maintained because of a non-electrostatic force. It is not maintained yet. There is a potential difference that is developed between the ends of the conductor. Now suppose you have uh, some rails on which this conductor is moving, the rails and uh, these electrons can flow from this conductor to these conductors. These conductors are all at rest. So these electrons flow because there is excess of electrons here and there is excess of this end is positive and this end is negative. So positive charge is supposed to flow like this but it is the electrons that go this way. But as the electrons leave the equilibrium is disturbed, the magnetic field force will push the electrons that way. So flow happens, potential difference maintained because of the force due to the magnetic field. There is a non-electrostatic force here, this is the physics way of maintaining the potential difference. This is the way we generate electrical energy. Well, we, move, we move conductors in magnetic fields, not uh, say translate them on rails like this, but rotate them in a magnetic field. That is how a dynamo works. Coils are rotated in magnetic field. So there is something, conductor moving in a magnetic field. The electrons in the conductor which are free to move inside the conductor experience a force due to the well, magnetic field and where potential difference gets to develop. So that is how you maintain a potential difference. You need a non-electrostatic force to maintain the potential difference.